going on YouTube? What's going on YouTube? If y'all have any questions, just let me know. How's it sounding out there?
to answer that question about running in uh, 110 versus 220, um, it's pretty much as uh, the more power you put in to an amplifier, as far as the current and so forth, it's the less it has to work, pretty much. So uh, your amplifier will work a little bit more using 110 versus 220. So uh, you want the best performance out of your amplifier, 220 is the way to go. Understand? It's not that it won't work in 110, it will work in 110, but uh, 220 will make it work less, less harder. You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, if you're running in if you're running in 110 and you have an amp that runs uh, 30 amps, like say the Barons or iNuke, which is at the very bottom there, or even the Crown Macrotech, here's what happens. The amplifier is going to draw a whole lot more trying to, trying to supply you know, the demand or whatever the case may be. So it's going to need that whole 30 amps. If you use 220, Let's just say your amplifier will then only use 10 amps of current. You get what I'm saying, if that makes sense. So it's the more voltage, less current draw. So that makes your amp more efficient, all right? And you get more out of it because it has to work less harder. All right, hope that helps. But you gotta keep in mind, not every amplifier can handle uh, 220. You know what I'm I mean, if you have the more Expensive amps, yeah, it will work, but uh, some uh, very cheap amplifiers will not uh, work in 220. Power soft is the way to go. Yeah, I like baseball stuff. They're pretty good. They're expensive too, man. Those are some solid speakers. I eventually worked my way up to that. Got a lot of new videos coming out soon. I'm gonna wait until after the holiday. I'll be doing a video on uh, the Wasi power amplifiers, W15K. And possibly do the ad mark also. We'll see what's up. All right, K30s. Definitely gonna do a video on the new uh, CVR, the 3302. 
console coming next year. I'm just gonna wait until after this holiday. JBL SRX 115 playing right now. I haven't heard the um, speakers of the CBRs. I haven't heard their speakers or subs, but um, from what I'm told, they're pretty good. They're decent. And they're at a good price also. I mean, if you just want to do, uh, you know, like medium sized events or so forth, yeah, I think they're the way to go. I don't know about concert, but um, yeah, but the CBR speakers are pretty good. They're, they're well built. I've seen that new double eighteen they have. Actually it's a it's a it's a three way. It has three eighteens in one cabinet. So um you know I'm thinking about getting one of those. I mean, it's gotta be heavy as hell though. The iNuke twelve thousand for base? Oh yeah. Yeah they're they're pretty good. They're decent. I mean uh before CVR, that's what was going on. I mean, it was all about iNukes. I mean, that was the way to go uh, a few years ago. It's all about iNuke 12,000. As you can see, I have two of them at the bottom there. All right, so uh, iNukes are good for bass. 6,000 is good for uh, mid-range. Yeah, they're pretty decent. I mean, they could play bass also, but I wouldn't go over 2,000 watts with them. You know, um, thousand watt speakers that um, NU6000, that four, four channel. Yeah, those are sweet. I would do up to about 1200 watt speakers with those. But the 12,000, 
Yeah, that can um, I can handle 2,000 watt speakers with no problem. And they're light. Yeah, the Wasi amps are pretty good, man. Yeah, I'll be doing a review uh, next year, early next year. All right, the W15K. Actually, we're gonna compare that to the new CVR 3302. All right. A lot of people have been comparing the Wasi with the with the um with the old CVR 3002. So I'm gonna compare it to the uh, 3302 and see what's up. All right, but you can't go wrong with the Wasi amps. Definitely the way to go. I mean, the guy's a technician, so hey, can't go wrong with that. All right, plus you get that warranty. tracks because uh you know youtube don't like all that copyright stuff so uh we're not even gonna go there i'll just keep it with these uh tracks here not too much bass is it guys running Tech 808. Yeah, I didn't see that uh, generator uh, question, but the Generacs are pretty good and a decent price if you're looking for a generator, portable generators. You can check out the Generacs. They're pretty good. A decent price too. They're way cheaper than the Hondas and so forth. Amp is about $17.99. So um it's a little bit more than the CVRs, but um but you're getting a very good build, alright? Um Lossie's a technician, plus you get the warranty. Anything wrong, you can always call him, you know, ask him what's up, you know, he'll help you out, no problem. Um, what kind of speakers would you use with the Wasi? I would say uh try to get like some RCF, um, BNC is pretty good. I would definitely use one of the high quality speakers. BNC, um, RCF, you 
can go with um what's the other model? I'm trying to think of it. Fatal Pros are good. I mean, just try to stay up in that uh you know good good brand, good quality. I wouldn't use like eminence or anything like that. You know, I would try to stay up with the 2000 and up wattage. All right, because uh, it's a high powered amplifier here. So uh, anything under a thousand watts, you know, speaker, you're going to have some problems because you're going to try to get more out of that speaker because the, the amplifier is going to have so much more headroom that what's going to happen is you're going to keep on blowing speakers. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just try to stay in that 2000 watts rms kind of deal you know don't do 2000 which is only 1000 watts rms yeah rcf is pretty good i'm thinking about getting those 400s man Actually, anything RCF makes is pretty good. Those P300s, man, those are killers. 2,000 watts, but now they have the 450s also. I have this connection with some Chinese brands. I'm going to check those out too. I'm going to get one just to see what it do. They say it's pretty good, closest you can get, So, uh, but uh, kind of like half the price. Something real nice for those uh, Wasi amps. Try that new BNC, that 21 inch, man. I would do two of those and bridge, bridge the amp. <laughs> it's straight killer. Oh, yeah. The V45, pretty good, man. All these speakers are going to be pretty, uh, pretty much changing over to neonadiums pretty soon. All these companies are trying that uh, lightweight stuff now, so pretty soon we're going to be paying a whole lot more for speakers than before. Power soft is no joke, man. That's the perfect thing for those uh, speakers. I mean, the secret, though, is to get good speakers. You know what I mean? You can pretty much get away with a, a decent amp and a great speaker. You understand what I'm saying? Versus the other way around where you have a a great amplifier and a cheap speaker um, doesn't work out too well. So always try to, you know, get a decent speaker to match your amplifier.
Hey Tech, what kind of management system are you running with that? I was asking what kind of uh, management system are you uh, running with your system? Are you using DBX? Let me know if the music is too loud. Kelvin, if you're on a budget, I would go with the iNukes. iNuke amplifiers by Behringer. You can start right there at the Behringer. All right, they're pretty decent. All right, as far as speakers, I would try to get some good speakers, the best you can afford. Um, try to go with like some BNCs or something like that. TBX 100s, you know. Because at least this way, when you do upgrade your amplifier, you'll still have a good speaker you can use until you decide to upgrade even more. I'm not going to tell you to get a very cheap speaker, because then, you, then you'll wind up changing everything. Understand? So I can lead you in the cheap route of buying a cheap amplifier for five, $600 and getting a speaker for like probably, I think they're probably about three something still. You can go that route. And then when you upgrade your amplifier, say maybe a Crown or a CVR or whatever the case may be, you'll still have a great speaker. All right. What do I think of the PowerSoft M Force Technologies? Oh man, those are way up there. Can't beat those. What is that? Uh, what's that, that X Sub? That, that guy, uh, Rat? Yeah. I mean, those are pro level stuff right there, PowerSoft. M Force, very good. A little bit out of my league. RCF, RCF two hundred six processors. Okay, RCF is really good. Okay, so you a RCF guy, huh, Tech? I'll eventually get a DBX 360 though. Yeah, that's all top quality there. RCF Bass Boss and Turbo Sound, you can't go wrong, man. As long as you're a good engineer behind it. Don't be one of those guys with all the great equipment and can't hook it up and you can't tune it, right? <laughs> you have a lot of those running around there. They got the most expensive stuff and can't tune it right. But yeah, that's the way to go, you know. RCF, baseball. Yeah, I just figured I'd do a live to, you know, answer a few questions or whatever the case may be. 
Believe it or not, I get a whole lot of questions. But I'll be adding a whole lot next year. Maybe going with the third rack, because I'm going to have so much equipment. Can't put it anywhere. So I might be getting another rack. Kelvin, being that you're uh, just starting out, you don't need to worry about a distribution system right now. I mean, uh, two or three amps, you can get away with using um, like a Furman power conditioner or a Monster. Because you won't be drawing that much uh, current to where you will need a distro right away. You can use a um, power conditioner maybe two power conditioners and run separate lines, separate 110 lines. All right, then you'll be all right. I did that for years. All right. So don't worry about 220 right now until, you, uh, until you're pulling some real serious power. Now, I mean, if you, if you go with like a few uh, Macrotech 3600s or something like that, then yeah, I would say you might need a distro because you'll be pulling a whole lot. You'll be tripping some breakers and whatnot. Okay, cool, Tech. All right, so you're really a tech guy. That's what's up. Okay. We're on that pro level. I respect that. Yeah, but Kelvin, don't worry about a distro right now. Just get your equipment together. And, uh... Get you a nice Furman or Monster and start out that way. What's good to do is to get two uh, power conditioners and then you run a separate line on separate circuits to each one and connect your amplifiers to, uh, to one of those uh, power conditioners. Go to Home Depot, you get those little drop boxes, and uh, you can get someone to put together a little drop box for you where you can plug the amplifiers into separate. But, um, but always just try to separate your amplifiers from your equipment so that way um, the amplifier is going to draw more current and you don't want your equipment dimming, you know, especially like your processes and stuff. You want to keep constant current going towards your. Uh, you know, your uh, management system and so forth. What's your favorite budget bass amplifier? iNuke. Definitely Behringer iNuke. Exactly, Tuck. Separate your power for your amps from everything else. Yeah, then you'll figure out where you're at because uh, you'll know if your amps are not putting out enough power because all the lights everywhere will be dimming. 
So you'll know straight up to uh, add another line or whatever you got to do. But yeah, don't worry about a distro right now. I remember I used to play in a club before I even um, had someone uh, run a distro for me. I would run three um, power lines from the outlet. And I would plug them into like three different uh, Furmans and I'll be good. Play all night. Is the Barons or NX6000 good? Um, supposedly it's the same thing as the iNuke 6000. I haven't heard anything bad about it. Yeah, they're just as uh, good as the 6000. It was just a different face. That's all they changed. I think it's a little quieter too. But uh, supposedly it's the same amplifier. I'm not sure why they haven't brought out the 12000. But uh, the iNuke 12000 is still available. Some stores still have them. Or you can find them on eBay. I would go that route. As you can see, I have two of them. That's why I bought two of them actually, because I think once they're gone, they're gonna be so valuable. I think Behringer made a mistake putting out the 12,000 and priced it the way they did. Cause uh, I think it actually turned out better than they expected. guys running like 10 of those damn i news and I mean they hold up yeah but, but try to get your hands on a uh, 12,000 if you could the NX 6000 is okay but um just try to get one of the original one the NU 6000 is a beast try to get that one instead of the NX 6000 Yeah, I used to go to the sound clashes in Brooklyn well, years ago. I know pretty much all the sound systems in New York. What's your opinion on Liberty International? Never heard him for myself. Is our base in London? Liberty is a big sound. Lammy? Yeah, man. That guy has a nice sound. Some power sauce and everything. The racks look identical. That's a pretty, uh, pretty nice sound. Professional setup, you know what I mean? That's a big sound. Nice and clean. If you go on, um, if you're on YouTube, you can um, you can look up the Sound Clash, um, Sound System Clash, and uh, his system is on one of them. I think they were doing uh, eight bass in the schoolyard. You can type in schoolyard sound system uh, clash. I used to have that in the summers.
Yeah, it's crazy. But don't the UK have Nutton Hill Carnival and all that stuff? Or is it just uh, certain sounds that can um, can do that? Hey Tech, I haven't been in um, any of those uh, champion sound uh, contests. Those just started recently. I don't live in New York anymore. Yeah, they are fun. We used to just battle it out in the clubs, you know, two systems and inside of a club. But now it's more uh, detailed. It's, it's a whole lot more serious now. It's all about uh, quality and all that stuff versus just who plays the loudest, you know what I mean? You gotta create it, man. If they don't have it, you gotta make it happen, you know? There's a lot of followings for sound system now, so I'm pretty sure there's a lot of sound system on the West Coast. I'll be glad to join in with you. I mean, you get someone to get a permit somewhere outside or, or, or rent a hall and just come together and get a few guys to, um, you know what I mean, get in on it. And that's how it started right there. That's how they started the sound system in New York. I mean, a couple of guys have some venues and they all came together and said, okay, yeah, we can do this. You know, just keep it peaceful. Um, try to keep the outside patrons out, you know, just try to keep uh, sound system guys in there and you're good, you know, so that way they don't mess it up for you. Cause you know, a couple of fights and a couple of shootings and that's it, it's done. So if you keep it more sound system related with, uh, you know, guys in the culture, you're good. Oh wow, only carnival? Man, that's crazy. So you guys gotta find like a, like a hall or a venue that you can uh, keep these things, you know? Rent a place, I mean buy a place, I mean you can do a lot of things to start it up yourself, you know? An investment. You'd be surprised how many uh, sound system guys would come out the woodworks and support that. You know. I mean, I'm thinking about doing the same thing in my area. I just need to find a venue that's decent enough. the outside crowd though because uh, once you start getting the outside crowd then it becomes a party and uh you know with that becomes the violence and before you know it your your whole thing is shut down
and who asked about the dryer plug. I'm going to be doing the same thing in a minute because I haven't turned on my whole system since I moved. I can only turn on like one or two amplifiers at a time because uh, these lights go crazy in this house. <laughs> hey, I like that, man. Hey, Tech. <laughs> yeah, you're a big dog, man. That's why they don't want to mess with you. RCF's turbo sound. Hell no. Bass boss. Nah, you got to stay over there. You be playing in the corner by yourself. Wow, Kenny, that's crazy. You can only bring four bass. That ain't no fun, man. Who do I think sound better? Liberty International Y2K? But Y2K is the boss in New York, man. You understand? It's hard to beat Y2K because he has all the tricks, all the good toys. That's the man right now. You know how it is, that doesn't stay for long because I mean, every day people are improving with their sound systems, you know. Oh, I haven't seen Y2K's amplifiers yet. Crazy next year. Oh, okay, I gotta check that out. What is he trying to compete with the Watsy M? That's crazy. Y2K's system is crazy. Yeah, I think he would give uh, Tech a run for his money with those uh, base boxes. Those base boxes. Yeah, I got to shake a building down, man. It sounds awesome. Hey, tech, don't be fooled by these uh, sound systems, though, man. They push a lot of power now. There's a lot of tricks behind this. <laughs> My DBX, has it ever failed me? No. I have a uh, DBX uh, 260. Pretty solid. 
actually haven't had any problems with it at all. Oh yeah, I've heard of Volcano, pretty heavy sound. The UK has some pretty heavy sounds though, overall. I think it's you guys voltage man that make these uh, UK sounds so heavy. I mean, we have 110, you know, um, you know, in the houses and so forth. You guys have like 220 in the house, basic, right? 240, whatever. But I mean, we uh, we use distros and get 220 same way. But I don't know, it's something about the UK, man. I don't know what it is. It's got to be the brands or something you guys use. I don't know. That's different. Or just better builders, I guess. You know Ligua? Yeah, I'm going to try to get some boxes, man, from him. All I need is four. Four base boxes, that's it. I know they're pretty solid, man. So what's the name of your system? I need four of those, man. Okay. All right, well, the name has to come before you buy one amplifier, all right? People are supposed to know you a little bit before you even buy one amplifier. <laughs> I had a name way before I could buy one record. what I like. A man with some determination, boy. Keep the sound system culture alive. Brute Finesse. That's an odd name, but yeah. Oh, okay. Brute Finesse. Okay, yeah. That sounds a little better. Finesse, you ought to name it Beast. All them base boxes, man. Base boss.
It's all right. Don't worry about what you have right now, Kenny man. Trust me. Over time, you will you will upgrade that amplifier, and before you know it, you have four amplifiers. But always just try to buy the best you can. Don't just buy the first thing you see that's on sale. All right. Just try to save up and get your money right, and try to go for that one good thing. And that's how you start out, not over, you know what I mean? Not overdoing it by have to resell all this, the cheap stuff that you bought, trying to get rid of that. Just try to buy the best one time and get it over with. And there's a lot of good cheap brands now. So, uh, you know, you get rid of that Gemini and you put a few hundred bucks on it, you get you an iNuke. And it starts right there, man. Or even the CVR, there you go. But the iNuke is cheaper, so uh, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna just get somewhere and start playing, you can probably get a couple of iNuke 12,000s for two of those instead of one CVR, all right? Well, just look at it this way, you get one iNuke NU4000 to play your highs and mids, and then you get an NU12000 to play your bass, and you're straight right there. You can run four boxes off of those, just those two amplifiers. Plus, you're in the UK. I'm sure you can get uh, iNukes all day long. It's kind of getting harder to find them here. I would use some B, uh, B and C's, TBX100s, man. That way you don't have to worry about replacing them after you get a better amp. expensive the BNC no they're not that bad I mean you can go with some eminence for bass also eminence has a really good uh I forgot the name of it. Something Max for, uh, I can play bass. I forgot the name of it. Yeah, see, there you go, Tech. Tell them buy once, man. Just save up and get you uh, some BNCs and buy you a cheap amplifier. Eight hundred watts is not bad. You can use those for uh, for those mids or for uh, bass speakers. And still in all, that's not yeah. And still in all, eight hundred watts is not is not bad. I mean, you figure twenty years ago, eight hundred watts RMS. Shit, you shake down the whole damn uh, house with that. Let's get you some good boxes, man. Put them in if they're 18. Yeah, that VMAX, right. There you go. You can build you like four boxes for probably about less than $200, man. Okay. So you have four base bins, you're good. And you're halfway there, man. Get rid of that Gemini, though. There's no way in the world that Gemini is going to power that without clipping a thousand times.
The 18, 18 sound is pretty good too. I would put them third though. I'll put RCF first, B and C, and then I'll put some uh, 18 sound. RCF would be my go-to speaker. Yeah, don't worry about power soft things. You have other amps that can play uh, play decent enough, you know what I mean? There's too many out there right now. I mean, if, if you even get a CVR and you're in a room playing, I mean, no one can tell the difference if you have a power soft or a CVR. What makes PowerSoft so expensive is all the technology that's in it, all that network stuff. I mean, 80% of us sound guys don't even use that network stuff. We're just buying extra shit that we don't need. But I mean, um, that's the only way to get the power, I guess. But uh, but where the price comes from is all that network uh, that they put in there. many alternatives to power soft right now. Power soft is pretty much bragging rights. <laughs> Guys with power soft is like is like owning a Mercedes, you know what I mean? Probably so. 18 sound RCF and BNC are the same. Probably so. I mean, don't get me wrong, PowerSoft does what it's made to do, trust me. You know what I mean? It's a very powerful amplifier. Built well, I mean, it's hard to beat, but I mean, there's just too many amplifiers that you can get good power from and don't have to go that expensive route. So don't get me wrong, I mean, if you are using it in like, you know, for concerts and so forth, I mean, that's the way to go. I mean, because you want something reliable. You don't want anything that's going to burn up on you half the show. So, uh, if you're going that route, power stuff is uh, really good. Or even labs. Labs are pretty good, too. But for a sound system to play in a venue, I don't think you need a power saw. That's just my opinion. about build quality when it comes to that comparison right there. Okay. Lab grouping is getting on that uh, affordable uh, designs now. That's good.
<laughs> yeah, gotta wait till after COVID, right? go in a minute so uh i appreciate y'all tuning in make sure y'all uh share and subscribe if you haven't uh subscribed and um just spread the word next week i'll do another live yeah i still have my cvr I still have my CBR at the bottom, at the right. Can't turn it on right now though, because the lights will start flickering. Well, actually, I can I can turn the. I'm gonna turn off the Euro Pro and I'll turn on the CVR. I'll be just playing mids though. All right, that's the CVR on at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see the lights flickering. CVR at the bottom. Yeah, there's no more 3002. You can still buy it, but they're just not going to make any more. is better than um, using a crossover now. There's so much more to a drive rack than just using a crossover. I'm old school though. I still want to use my equalizers and um, and my 
BBE and stuff. I don't think the drive rack alone is uh, is efficient. I mean, some guys will say otherwise, but uh, now if you're using like a digital board, yeah, I think uh, that has a lot of processing and stuff in it also. So you won't need as as many processes as I'd have. You understand what I'm saying? So. Um, It's, it's good to have, it's better than the crossover. Because with just the drive rack, I mean, you can tune and get your sound, but that extra oomph is not there for me. You know, that's, that's my opinion. You know, I can't get the bass I want with just the drive rack. Shockproof from um from a guy off Craigslist. I think it's a I think it's a Roadrunner or something like that. Road ready. It's pretty solid. Yeah, the shock proofs are nice. The only thing you're gonna add like the extra 20 pounds to a regular rack. I mean, they're, they're pretty heavy just by themselves. Hey Kenny, that's the iNuke 12,000 man playing some bass for you. collector amps. I might not use them much, but uh, those are my collector amps because I think one day they're going to be pretty valuable.
The only thing I don't like about the iNuke 12000 is when you turn it off, it doesn't have like a muting. So sometimes you hear the speakers make a little popping noise, kind of. I mean, just from it being turned off. That's the only thing I don't like about them. The NU6000 is a little bit better. I think it has muting on the, on the power. The NU12000, they just straight up just put a power into it. That's it. They didn't put any, any additives, no features, no nothing. At least the CVR has protection. When you turn it on and turn it off. No, those are two macro techs. 3600. Was your system stereo or mono? Um, put it like this, it's stereo in the mid-range section, you know, but it's, uh, separated when it comes to the bass and subs, if that makes sense. So my tops are in stereo, but my, um, my bass and subs is separate, it's in mono. Because I run five-way, pretty much. Yeah, I love my crowns, man. Honestly, if I had to get rid of all the other amplifiers, I think I would keep my crowns. Call me crazy, but yeah. I would keep the crowns of everything else. QSC, Behringer's, CVR, all that can go. I would still keep the crowns. Even though they're heavy as hell. They're about 55 pounds. But there will be a time when all this digital stuff will fade away and we all will go back to our heavy ass amplifiers. Kevin, I think there's a there's a time limit on all these uh, digital stuff. You know that. How many years can these capacitors last, right? In these new amplifiers. But you're gonna keep on replacing your amplifier every five years. I could still have those crowns another 10 years or more. Yeah, the weight is crazy, but um, I don't plan on lifting them up any stairs, trust me. I make sure my rack is on wheels too. <laughs> Definitely that. Trust me, that rack right there, man. Woo, Jesus. But those old QSCs are heavy as hell, too. So the rack to the right weighs more than the rack to the left. Yeah, I have two MX at the top. Those QSCs, those are MX.
Yeah, it'll take about four people to lift my uh, my rack. So I gotta get another one. I think I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna follow you. in Virginia. Tech, so what do you plan on buying next, man? What's the new hottest thing you're gonna get? familiar with those. Not too familiar with already made boxes. Um, unless they're powered. Maybe the speakers, yeah, but cabinet itself. We like to build our own around here.
when you're building a sound system, it's better you uh, have someone build your boxes to your uh, to what you need. You understand? Versus buying already made boxes. I mean, you can, but um, you get a builder to build your boxes is better. That way, you can load it with whatever speakers you want. Yeah, those are pretty good. I have two ZLX tops. Got you a Rottenville though, man. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing around. The EV is better. The ELS. Good boxes. I like Yorkville stuff. Those 808s, man, those are pretty good. I 
kind of scoops you gonna make? A super scoop or regular old old scoops? Scoops are the way to go now, or those Canadian uh, scoops. I made some halfway uh, doubles Canadians, but I haven't even loaded them up yet to check them out. I'm definitely going to do that in the coming months. Everybody's running those short Canadian boxes now. The rest of the super scoop. Chambers your box have the better your speaker needs to be. them in a garage or something. We try playing some reggae. Out of those tracks, had to change it up. I'm 
no power in this room whatsoever. No power. Yeah, the struggle is real, man. I need a whole separate breaker. Yeah, yeah, you'll have a whole lot of power with just that, trust me. What I'm running right here, yeah, totally different, man. These amplifiers love power. watching appreciate the support share and like i'll probably do another video next week all right appreciate the support y'all all right keep on doing your thing and stay safe all right